Okay, guys, welcome. So today we're going to talk about basic theory of systems of ODEs, and we'll talk about how the Ronskin can be applied to looking at a system of ODEs, whereas before we looked at the Ronskin sort of as it pertained to uh, a basis of solutions for a single ODE, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about some sort of theory and basic concepts behind uh, system of ODEs, right? And a lot of this theory is going to be very similar to uh, single equations, um, but we're going to look at sort of some more general cases of this, all right? So we're going to assume that we have sort of this system of N ODEs, and we're going to let F1 through N, uh, sorry, F1 through Fn be the associated uh, functions of lesser derivatives uh, for each of these um, for each of these uh, equations here. All right. Now, of course, you can write this as a vector equation as just y prime is equal to f time. So your function f of uh, t and your y vector here. So this is basically saying that you have y one prime through y n prime. And that's equal to this function, so F1 of T comma, and then that Y1 through Yn vector, so on all the way down to Fn of T, and then Y1 through Yn. All right, so this is a nice shorthand way that we can write this out, right? Okay, so of course, as a solution of this system of ODEs, right, is a system of differentiable functions, right, that satisfy your original system on some particular interval, right? And of course, you can have, you can write this in vector form as well. So this would be in vector form. And an initial value problem would have to then have n specified initial conditions, right? Which again, you can, uh, you can put in vector form. Um, but of course, we can talk about when this system would have a solution, all right? So if, so that brings us to our first theorem. So if we have our F1 through Fn, um, which of course each F is, the function associated with the particular derivative, um, we're going to assume that if we have our f's are continuous functions and they all have the required continuous partial derivatives, so we all of your f1 derivatives are continuous, all your f2 derivatives are your continuous, and so on and so forth, all your fn derivatives are continuous, right? And it's in the same domain. Um, of your y1 through yn space, so just your um, your rn space, you can th you can think of it as um, which contains your initial condition uh, point vector there. Then the system has a unique solution on some interval satisfying the initial conditions, right? So essentially, what do you need for a unique solution? You need those f's to be continuous with continuous partial derivatives. Right. So that's essentially what we need here. Now, we can sort of extend um, our notion of what we mean by a linear ODE, and we can call it a system, of course, if it's linear in our y1 through yn. All right. So we can sort of represent um, our system in this way. All right. So as a vector equation, we can represent it in this y prime equals y, or sorry, equals a y plus g, where your a is your, again, your coefficient matrix. All right, which may or may not be variable, by the way, right? So up here, they sort of, in the general case, define it to be sort of dependent on t. So that coefficient matrix may be dependent on t.
right? And of course your Y vector is your, what we think of as our solution vector or Y1 through YN. And <clears throat> your G is going to result from your, um, if you have sort of some non-homogeneous terms there, right? So on that note, we, of course, we could say that the system is homogeneous if that G vector is zero. And of course, if it's non-zero, then it would be non-homogeneous, right? Okay, so now in the linear case, you sort of have these similar um, ideas before. This is just sort of a refinement of the theorem that we mentioned before, except for a linear case. And this basically says that if you were um, if all of your coefficients in your coefficient matrix, again, which may or not be variable, uh, dependent on T, if they are continuous functions on some open interval and they contain your uh, initial condition value, um, then the solution is unique. So again, this is just sort of a refinement for the linear case. All right, now theorem three just says that the superposition principle is going to hold um, for this case as well. Uh, this is not a hard proof to look at. So if we assume that we have a solution, so we're going to assume that y is equal to c1 times a solution vector y1 plus c2 times a solution vector y2, right? Um, then what does the proof look like? Well, the proof looks like, well, then take the derivative of both sides, right? And this would be this first step. So then you move your derivative inside to the y terms, right? But then what are each of these things? You know that y2 prime, for example, is a times y2, and y1 prime is a times y1. So then factor out your a, and then you exactly have a times y. Right, so then we've shown that y prime is equal to a y prime, which means that we do have a solution. Right, now again, just as in the single equation case, this only works for homogeneous linear systems. Right, so we showed in a previous video that if you have a non homogeneous system, this no longer works, and that is also still true for the, uh, for the systems case. All right, so that's one thing to keep in mind. Now, the, uh, the notes here sort of use a superscript uh, to denote different solutions here, but I'm going to use the subscript just as we did before, just to avoid any confusion, All right? So if you see that, that sort of in the notes, um, that's what we're assuming to be sort of the, the subscript, All right? Okay, so, now we'll talk about what we mean by a basis of solutions and how that sort of relates to the Ronskian. So by a basis or fundamental system of solutions for a system, um, we just mean that those Y1 through Yn are linearly uh, independent, right? So when we say basis, again, you wanna sort of think that Y1 through Yn are linearly independent solutions. Right, so that's what we mean by that. And what we will also frequently do um, is that we'll show that, or not that we'll show that, but we'll also use sort of this capital letter Y to indicate my vector of solution. So that's Y1 all the way through Yn. All right, now again, remember that, oh, I'm sorry, it's not like this, it's like a column. Right, so you have y1, and then you sort of have the first component here all the way down to y1 with the nth component here. Oh, let me just show it here, right? So this matrix here, uh, of course, if you take the determinant of that, I should put a determinant here, right? That would give you what would be called the Ronskin of this. All right now, this matrix that I started to write out here that I have here is also called the fundamental matrix. All right, so here 
this is where you have your solution Y1 as a column. And then here you have Y2 as a column, so on and so forth. And this is your YN column. All right. Now, what does each row represent? This represents the first component of each of those. And this represents the second component of each of those. And so on and so forth. And then this represents the nth component. All right. And for our sake, this is sort of how I will define uh, my subscript and superscript notation. This is just, I, I think it's more of a frequently used uh, notation for this, All right? So I'm using this subscript to note the sort of the, which solution vector I'm talking about. And I'm using the superscript to represent which component of that solution vector am I talking about? All right, so now just as before in the single equation case, if we're looking for sort of a basis of solutions, we're going to have that the solutions form a basis um, if, of, of course, our Ronskin is non-zero for any t value that we consider, right? So that tells you that you have essentially n linearly independent solutions if the determinant of this matrix is non-zero, right? All right, and of course, last but not least, we can write sort of our general solution as our y, um, our y vector, our solution vector. As some arbitrary constant vector times our y vector. And again, this c is just sort of your n arbitrary constants. All right. So that wraps up this video on some of the theory behind system of ODEs. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed and I will see you next time.